all you naysayers, Steve and I are back again. It's been a week and we've got another <laughs> podcast we're going to record. Steve, how you doing? Good, Jeff. How you been? I have been well. You know, uh, I did get diagnosed with uh, slight rotator cuff tear. So uh, I've been uh, doing my uh, exercises and physical therapy. Uh, good news is I can still shoot pistols without a problem. So uh, I've been able to get some carry optics open and uh, RFP work in. So I've been uh, I've been able to shoot this week. How about you? Did you get any practice in? Yeah, of course I did. I uh, did some uh, training this past weekend and uh, going to be training uh, all day Saturday and Sunday. And it is going to be beautiful, beautiful yes. weather out. I think it's like 71 and sunny right now and couldn't ask for anything better. Back to the back to the shoulder. Are you going to have to do surgery for that or what are they uh, what are they saying? Yeah, they you know, when I went and talked to the doctor and then he got the results, you know, he basically said you have three choices. You can get a shot which is just going to make the pain go away. You can get surgery, which will definitely fix it, or you can do physical therapy. And the fact that it's only the front of the supraspinatus, it's not the, it's not a full tendon tear. Uh, we're going with the uh, physical therapy for now in hopes that to strengthen all the other muscles, it won't repair the tear, but we're hoping it will give me the mobility and then we'll see on the pain management if that works. So right now, I'm not going to get surgery. Um, okay. I've done a lot of research, and it it looks like it's just a uh, what's arthroscopic procedure. But right. uh, you know, uh, hospitals where all the sick people are. I don't want to go in the hospital. <laughs> hey, did I tell you what I did last night? <laughs> you know, I saw something on Facebook, Jeez. so I was going to uh, I was going to bring that up as well. Uh, something about your calf. Yeah, I don't. I think it's a. I think it's a a slight tear. I felt a pop and big stinging sensation. Can barely walk. All that kind of dramatic stuff. But uh, no, I've got uh, I've got an appointment on Monday. That's as soon as that they could see me but uh hopefully it's not too awfully bad you know but uh yeah built a little character you know this whole getting in shape and playing tennis stuff it's for the birds man <laughs> <laughs> we you know and and you've got your your wife who i saw pictures this was the city champion so uh yeah that's, uh you 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 know she gets to go out does she kick your butt no, no, it, not not yet. But well, in my current state, probably, probably. Oh, that, so now's my, the time to challenge. <laughs> uh, I know. So last night, so it was the third night in a row we played. So uh, two nights ago, I played for three hours. The night before last, I played uh, for three hours. And last night, we were about two hours in. See, that's probably the problem. But yeah. me and my youngest daughter, Olivia, she's 13. And uh, she had a minor surgery, so she couldn't play for about eight, nine weeks. So it was her and I against my wife and another, actually my men's double partner. And, uh, man, my, my daughter, Olivia, she was hitting that ball, like a boss lady. I'm like, where's this been? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we were up, I don't know, five, three, and I think it was 40 love and, uh, chased after a ball and felt a pop and it's like, oh. I got stung on the back of the leg. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, you know, us old people trying to trying to be young and get in shape it's pretty dangerous it's dangerous you should have pulled the uh the uh what was it uh forrest gump something bit me <laughs> yeah it was uh whew. as soon as i felt it pop i was like oh boy oh boy yeah it's uh well, i wish you the <laughs> fastest of recovery there we uh we've got group medical going on. My dad said he's gonna build a handicap ramp into our house because Vanessa's still in a wheelchair and I'm all uh hobbling around and <laughs> Olivia's doing better now. But yeah, we're we're a cast of characters, Jeff. It's 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 something to see. <laughs> now had had you played much tennis before, or is this something you're just picking up? So long story kind of short, um, uh, my wife and I to to get in shape of you know, I don't know, 10 years ago, or well, actually it's probably 14 or 15 years ago. Um, in between kids and all that stuff, my wife wanted to get back into, you know, pre 
Vanessa birth uh, shape. And so we would play not knowing what we're doing, just more for exercise. And then uh, probably about four years ago, maybe five years ago, my wife's like, hey, I want to play tennis. I'm like, yeah, OK. So, you know, we just hit the ball around, you know, try to keep it within the fences. But and then about four or five years ago, she found a, a group of ladies here locally started playing and she was playing like two, three nights a week and, you know, having a good time. And I support that, you know, I think everybody needs to have a hobby and, you know, especially something athletic, I think is really good. And then in December of this past year, so what, five, six months ago, she says, Hey, uh, my mixed doubles team doesn't have enough men. I said, Oh, that really sucks. (laughs) And then she stared at me and I said, well, sounds like a you problem. Well, quickly, Jeff, that became a me problem before I know it, you know, I was out on the tennis court at practice and, and so, uh, you know, really not knowing what I was doing, um, picked it up, uh, pretty quick, you know, got pretty decent eye hand coordination and, uh, learned a little bit about a little bit about the sport. So, um, so we played mixed doubles, did okay, did okay. And then played men's doubles this past, uh, you know, it's like a six or eight week season. And now we're practicing for, uh, mixed doubles again and, that's where that's where it got me. So yeah, that's gotcha. my story, tennis. But hey, look, Jeff, I'm serious. In the last like four months, man, I've lost 21, 22 pounds playing tennis. Nice. And I nice. feel feel good, brother. So you know, it's not all that bad. Good to hear. Good to hear. Well, let's uh enough about tennis. Let's talk about some steel challenge. Uh going on right now is the TACOM 2023 area three steel challenge uh it started today and uh i was doing some research and uh it's good size match they've got 201 entries so far and you know right off the bat jenna larson is leading the pack with a 68 27 in rfpo which is wow that's great very good score very good score yeah yeah um so uh everybody that's uh there hope you have a good time at area three uh just going down here lots of people that we both know that are shooting that match so uh, hopefully that'll be a good one and that leads into um some stuff i was looking to see if the uh minutes had come out yet for uh the board meeting uh i know uh one of the things that we're all looking to we're looking to present and everyone's looking to find out is you know what are the peak stage time changes Mm -hmm. i know they were presented and so we've just got to wait for the board minutes the meeting minutes to be posted uh to find out what the results are uh of that vote and um once that's done i think we'll probably do another podcast just talking about peak time changes that'd be awesome that would be awesome yeah there's a there's a go ahead go ahead i was just gonna say i I look forward to that and then there's a couple other matches coming up there's some big news that got got released the other day yep Um, yep so for those that don't know why don't you share that so the uh what was the south georgia match jamie mundy's match and uh Man, he's uh, he's had a great match. You know, we were talking last podcast about how to how to have a first rate match. You know, they've got painters at at uh, each of the uh, each of the stages. Him and his wife. It's really Chelsea that that does all the work. She's the brains behind that operation. You can tell Jamie I said that. But uh, yeah, they they uh, have last couple of years they've done it. I think it's been this would be the third time. But yeah, for the last been two, two years, two previous yeah. ones. Last year's uh the steel challenge gods were not on our side and tried their best to uh cause that match to not happen and through jamie and staff's resiliency uh it finally did happen Um, yeah they flooded that rain i mean it was like under four feet of water it was yeah um yeah if you wanted to go paint i think the stage i saw was outer limits if you wanted to go paint outer limits you were better off taking a wave runner down (laughs) you you could actually you could actually see the watermark on the uh the shelter at the base of how high it was it's probably five feet in the air four feet five feet in the air crazy but you know in terms of first class matches you know 
they're dropping off uh hot subs from firehouse at each of the stages for yep. lunch and yeah first first rate match but uh jamie texted me uh a few days ago and said hey man you want to be our sponsorship coordinator for uh the area six match so it's uh it's gonna be an area match so we're looking forward to that nice well you know that raises a really good point um you know i've been a match director for a number of match from from my match for a number of years west florida and you know the first couple of years we did everything and there's enough work for a match director to do that having someone willing to step up and be the sponsorship yeah. coordinator i.e prize table is mm-hmm. huge um it- it's just one thing less that, uh, you know, one thing to take off of uh, a match director's plate. Yep. You know, they've got enough coordination, ROs and painters and all that other kind of stuff. So that's yep. the least I can do to help out. Well, that's really cool. So, yeah, so that match uh, is in September for those that are interested. So uh, it is online. Uh, registration is open now. Um, I think one of the really cool things about that match, too, is it's I think it's a very fair price, sixty dollars for the yeah, match. That's not that's not bad so, at all. You know, that's uh for those that are the looking for a uh, a super quality match at a very fair price in a great area. I mean, the range is what 10 minutes off the interstate. Yeah. And yep, yep. you know, 12 minutes from food and hotels and all that stuff. It's it's a great match. I highly recommend it. I've been there two years and I'm, I'm going to do whatever I can to make sure I make this year's. Um, hey, do you want to hear something funny? I'd love to hear something funny. So I called Kurt Grimes the other night. I just check it in. We'll see how he's doing this and that. Dude, he, he's ticked because now he's going to have to get a ice cream truck for two days of the area two match. So yeah, sorry, Kurt. <laughs> but that's the only reason why I'm coming to California is because of the ice cream. Well, it's not really. It's to see see his wife, Maria. She's fantastic. But, uh, yeah, no, it's uh, – thanks, Kurt. We appreciate all you do for the sport. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, you know, uh, talking about matches, I, I pulled up the major match uh, schedule, and I'm looking here, and looks like next weekend is Area 1, which is fantastic. Um, that same weekend is also the Arizona state steel challenge championships. And then the week after that, TACOM is sponsoring the area five steel challenge match. Lots the of weekend, shooting over there. Huh? Jeez. Yeah, the weekend after that, you've got Missouri, Missouri state. Okay. That's the weekend of, uh, June 16th. And then rounding out June, you've got the Michigan State Steel Challenge Championship. It's crazy. So, uh, and that one's got a little extra uh, plus for those uh, willing to go to Michigan and shoot that. It's supporting the uh, Ryan Rocks Outdoor Adventures. Uh, So Amazing, uh, amazing charity. Yep. So um, that's one thing we're going to be doing here uh, when we talk is try to give an update of, of what's coming up for those that are, are interested or may, may not be in the know. Uh, if you're listening here, uh, these matches can be found on the SCSA uh, site as well as, of course, you can search practice score. And what, one, other, uh, one other match call out that's coming up is a uh, yep. friend of the podcast, Alan Coleman's running this first major match out at the Pontucky gun club. That's right outside of Augusta and Blythe, Georgia. So that one, whew, that's going to be a, a fantastic match. It's a great club and uh, it's not too far from you, Jeff. Not too no, far. I plan on making, you know, I've got it uh, listed here. In fact, uh, if I look at my big calendar on the wall, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that matches at the end of August. That's correct. 25, six and seven. Yep. Uh, area six is the September 22, three and four. So yep. yeah, sounds like some good, uh, good long weekends to be able to go up there. Um, and of course for anyone listening, um, being a match director, I know that people are always looking match directors are always looking for quality ROs. So if you, um, do have an interest in being an R at those matches, uh, contact the match directors, uh, Jamie Mondi for uh, Area 6, 
and Alan Coleman for uh, what is the name of his match? It's the I just closed it out. It is the C R uh, no C S R A Speed Shooting Championship. Yep. C R S A Speed Shooting Championships at Pine Tucky. So, um, yeah, if you know if big matches like that are within you know nine ten hours driving distance for me, I'm going to do my best to make them. Yep, and so yep. they're on my calendar, and I think I've got some vacation left over. If not. Drive up Friday, shoot Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, it still works. I, like I think it. Pine Tucky is only about six hours away. I know Jamie's is only about four hours away, so that's not so bad for me. Cool. Well, that's match updates. A uh, little update on uh, where we are with peak times. Just waiting on the uh, the BOD minutes. Um, now, Steve, you had sent me a picture of something uh-huh. really cool. Are are you ready to talk about that yet? Yeah, I, I can talk a little bit, uh, a little bit about it. So, uh, so can I tell then, the people uh, what the picture was? Sure, go go right ahead. Well, so, make sure you you talk about the right picture, Jeff. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, you know, that, that, this that's is a G rated family show, right? Th- those other ones go in the NSFW for uh, folder. So, <laughs> <laughs> um. So I'm sitting here one night, sitting down, just, you know, watching TV, not doing much of anything. Text comes in from Steve Foster. And it's this picture of this absolutely gorgeous Volkortsen with these stunning grips and a magwell. Yeah. And I'm looking at it going, did he, like, use photoshop and this is something he wants to work on (laughs) so then you know i get what do you think and i'm like uh i'm not even bothering to answer the text i just called him back (laughs) yeah yeah. i said talk to me what do we got here so tell the people what you got steve so i've been working on it for way way too long you know it's one of those kind of things that uh back in 2016 when i started shooting uh pretty serious well actually in 2015 um, I bought a Ruger Mark III, and uh, I was using Buck Marks at the time, but um, they just didn't prove to be as reliable as I needed to be. So uh, the Mark III, it, you know, there was not really a good magwell on the market for what I wanted it to be. Um, you know, there's some people out there that I think have tried, and maybe there's some, you know, okay options out there, but not necessarily for what I was looking for. And so uh, the Ruger platform i i sell that as a dealer for volcourts in and then of course with uh, tandem process as a dealer um you know the krakens as well as mambas mamba x's and done a couple exclusive lines with uh, volcourts in to make a mamba x six inch iron sight with the x on it um and so i've always wanted to design a, a really cool magwell and so it really started about i don't know six seven years ago did a prototype and it just you know trying to get somebody to to give you time to draw it to to do a production and those kind of things it, it was always pretty tough and so you know it's been probably i don't know maybe eight nine months ago i said you know what i've always wanted to do this and let's let's put something out there on the market buy a shooter for a shooter that shooters will really appreciate and like so one make it a a static and make you know take a gun to the next level of cool right and uh i think it's got a really cool aesthetic but then um but then uh there's also been talk about doing some uh action shooting with 22s and so wanted a functional magwell so rimfire falling steel uses uh um uh, pistols as well as rifles and so there really wasn't a magwell out in the market that was really functional and it's a little complicated as you look at trying to make a magwell for you know a 2245 to be functional but uh, definitely definitely accomplished that and so wanted something that will stand the the test of time and so uh, that's what we got and to make it uh, really structural you know have the structural rigidity that we need Mm-hmm. Um, came up with a couple, couple of designs, but integrated the grips into the magwell. So if you look at the bottom of the magwell, the grips actually are, you know, a quarter or so of the magwell and it, uh, and it 
tapers in and those things are rock solid so it was designed to go on a 2245 mark IV as well as a, a tandem cross kraken it's also designed to take uh, factory base pads as well as extended base pads for the kraken as well as uh, i'm sorry extended base pads for tandem cross as well as blow quartz them because we want those to those to work because sometimes when people design those kind of things they come up uh just a just a, a tad shy and it's you know make your own proprietary base pad or something like that and you know at some point maybe i'll make one but you know there's some great companies doing some great products out there so I didn't want to reinvent the wheel and then the other thing that uh, so so the magwell itself bolts onto the grips which it's going to be all aluminum some people have felt the uh you know the 3d model um, hold on, hold on, printed hold on. version I'm of confused. it i'm confused hold mm -hmm. on one second mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you had stated that the grips and the mag it's all one unit it's all one piece the, correct the, they're they're three pieces so okay. that what you do, yep they're three pieces but in order to get the magwell um to get to the level of you know design and structural rigidity that i want mm -hmm. um had to integrate the magwell to bolt onto the grips and make okay. it out of aluminum. Yep, yep. Okay. So, so the, the, I'm assuming the process would be mount the grips onto the magwell, make that connection, then slide it onto the frame and lock down the, the grips with the standard screws that are provided. So, or is it similar, the other way where you put the grips it, on first and then bolt the magwell? Yep. It, 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 yeah, that's correct. You put the grips on, okay. and I'll put instructions in there. But what you have to do, no one will read them. The, we, we, we the, shoot, gun. we don't read, we don't read instructions. We just the, the fit and finish <laughs> is as perfect as well as I think it can be to be designed and manufactured for two different types of frames. So the, the fit is just, you know, I've had a couple of machinists look at it and they said, you know what? very complimentary said so the fit on that and finish is is first class but what you have to do is you have to bolt the uh grips onto the frame leave them just a little bit of loose just a little loose and give it just a just a little bit of play slide the magwell on and then uh put the small bolts onto the uh magwell into the grips and then tighten the grips to the frame um you know using the the studs that are on the uh on the grips the other thing that is actually very very interesting that i wanted it to be comfortable outside of the aesthetics and the functionality of a true magwell it actually offers another point of contact for the shooter so and it works with very size hands if you have super super small hands you don't get this benefit but as you uh grow older or your hands get just a, a tad bigger i'd say i've got medium size hands and it works for this for this it mm -hmm. offers another point of contact at the front of the gun to the point that without the magwells running an accelerator and you know shot probably 50 strings and i was using a gun without the magwell with the point of contact i was running 185s 190s pretty consistently and again you know i'm all tuned up because i'm i'm racing and then I ran it with the Magwell. I was running low 17s, 175s, 177s consistently. Wow. And the reason why is because that front point of contact, it's not allowing any lift of the front of the gun at all. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, so that was uh, uh, another And the grips, the grips it, are but... not smooth. They're, they're definitely mm -hmm. textured, correct? Yep, yep. And it's got what I would call a medium aggressive to it. You know, there's a lot of people out there that want super aggressive, so nothing moves. Well, with this type of design, you don't need something that's going to hurt your hands. All you need is um, something that's got a little bit of texture, and then the grip will support the rest, and the gun doesn't move. And you can shoot the whole day with these uh, with these grips, and it, it won't hurt your hands. Um, okay. The, the other the other last design element, because there are different size hands, I've thought thought about different options. I won't get into some of the maybe future modifications of it, but with people with exceptionally large hands with the flared magwell all around it, um, that ends up being pretty problematic for people. And so that's why the back of the magwell is pretty much flush with the frame. It allows somebody's if they've got uh, big hands, 
it uh, doesn't impede their grip by their hand, you know, riding too uncomfortably on the back of the magwell. So, but you still get the benefit of the front of the magwell. So right. it's a, uh, it's a little bit more one size fits all. And I think the last part that I would share about it is that the tandem cross crack in, I'll get a measurement, but it's probably a quarter inch, maybe three eighths of an inch difference in height compared to a 2245 grip because of the point of the bottom of the trigger guard to the top of the mag well is going to be slightly different. So if you find that with a crack in your hands are too cramped in the front, which I don't think you'll find that, but just in case, if you do have enormous hands, if you put it on a 2245, you get a little bit more, a uh, little bit more relief. So yeah, I'm excited about it, man. We're uh, going to production, did a couple of pre-production that we tested last weekend for fit finish and those kind of things. And uh, so they're going to be, uh, pretty sure i'm landing on uh black anodizing for the finish and i'm targeting somewhere where around august 1st to get them uh to get them rocking and rolling so appreciate all the feedback and your feedback and posted some pictures out there and i've got an overwhelming response and so i've got a pre-order list going so if you're interested in them reach out to me and uh, we'll just wait down a couple things to truly confirm the price unfortunately the cost of manufacturing of some of these machine shops is extremely it, it's it, it's high and it's a little bit complicated based on the cuts and those kind of things so it does take some uh time to machine but i'm trying to keep it as reasonable as possible but definitely an, a cool upgrade for your uh your uh your rim fire uh pistol all right now a oh, couple mm -hmm. questions well finish your comment and then i have some uh, questions so so somebody asked me in one of the groups derek out in california asked me Hey, what about a Mark III? It's too bad it's not designed Bingo, for Bingo, that's it. my question. Okay, so great question. So here's, it fits perfectly on a Ruger Mark III. As you're aware, because I think you've got a couple of Scorpions. I do. The The magazines are slightly different. Yep. And based on the angle of how the mag is inserted and keep the integrity of a functional mag well, you have to make a small modification to the base pads if you have an extended base pad. And what that means is, is that you just have to take it to a sander and take about an eighth of an inch off the back. And I've posted some pictures out there and then it works fully with a Mark III. Will the standard gunsmithing tool of a Dremel work? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'd, I'd probably use a little bit of sandpaper if somebody's got a, a sand wheel or something. But, uh, you know, if you want to get froggy with a Dremel, that's probably not the best fit and finish. But, yeah, that'll work. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome, Steve. Uh, love to hear the innovation. Um, I definitely got to get on that pre-order list uh, and give them a try. Uh, you know, I do know uh, for myself, I always promote that, you know, one of the most important things you can do when shooting this game is have the correct form. And part of that mm -hmm. form is having yeah. the correct grip. And yep. this definitely is going to... Uh, make a difference uh, in allowing people to to do that. And for those that say don't have a great grip, it's still going to give them that advantage because it's going to be more stable just because of that, yep. that base pad under the hand. Yep. Yep. And I, I did have a prototype at the world rimfire match um, in, uh, in Tennessee and the squad that I have, I could have sold probably uh, 10 or 20 of, just just by that and of course this design is a little bit better than uh than that design so yeah we're uh we're ready to rock and roll jeff i'm i'm pretty excited it's a it's a pretty uh, big, you should uh, be a, i'm i like i said when i saw the pictures it wasn't going back and forth in a text it was call my buddy yeah. and get the skinny so for sure for sure man all right well you know what we kind of promised we were going to make these short and sweet and to the point i think we had a good one here I think it's a good opportunity to end it. Um, but, you know, we always end it on that same ending. So give them that coupon code, Steve. Yeah, 10% off of uh, products produced at uh, steeltargetpaintrangestore.net. So it's ST Podcast 10. It's good talking with you, Jeff. Same here, Steve. Have a good one. All right, we'll see you, man. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.